Hello and welcome. In this lab we will be performing a moisture unit weight relationship, a test better known as a compaction or proctor test. This is used to determine the relationship between moisture content and dry unit weight. This test covers standards ASTM D698 and ASHTO T99, which are standard proctors, and ASTM D1557 and ASHTO T180, which are modified proctors. We will need the following items to perform this test. All the parts of the compaction mold, a proctor hammer, a number four sieve, balance, a pan, straight edge, graduated cylinder, extruder, and an oven. The first thing we need to do is to prepare the soil. Depending on what type of material we are using will determine what we need to do to prepare the soil. There are three methods for each type of proctors, i.e. standard and modified. These methods are based on the gradation of the material. Method A, less than 25% is retained on the number 4 screen. Method B, less than 25% is retained on the 3 8 inch screen. And method C, if less than 30% is retained on the 3 quarter inch screen. Methods A and B uses a 4 inch mold and method C uses a 6 inch mold. We will be using a material that is covered under method A. We will screen enough material through a number 4 screen to set up 4 different samples. Seeing how our samples have a significant amount of silts and clays, we will need to soak it for at least 12 hours. Once we have the material screened and separated into four samples, we will need to moisture condition the material. To do this, we need to know what the current moisture of the sample is and add the difference of that and the moisture content we want. Unfortunately, it is through experience that we are able to get the moisture samples where we want them. So if you have ever performed this test, test do your best. You may end up doing six plus points to get what you want, or start out too wet and have to dry it all back. Good luck. We will want to change the moisture content of each sample so they are approximately two to three percent different from each other. What we are shooting for is to have two samples less than optimum moisture content and two samples greater than that. For example, if our sample has an optimum moisture content of 12%, we will want our samples at 9, 11, 13, and 15 percent. The optimal moisture content is when we have enough moisture in the sample to fill all the voids between the grains of soil, but not so much that the water content starts replacing the soil. Once our samples are set up and have hydrated for 12 hours, we are ready to start our test. Since we are doing method A, we will be using a 4 inch mold and we will be doing a standard proctor, so we will be using a five and a half pound hammer with three lifts and 25 blows per lift. We need to get the weight of the mold without the collar attached before we start our test. The first lift, we will fill the mold up about one half way and compact it. The next lift, we will fill almost the top of the mold and compact. The last lift, we will fill about halfway up the collar and compact it. When we are done, we want to see the soil at about a half inch to one inch above the top of the mold when the collar is removed. At this point, we will use our straight edge to get the soil level with the top of the mold, making sure we fill all the voids.
Weigh the sample again to get your mold plus soil weight. We will remove the mold from the base and place it in the extruder to remove the soil from the mold. And then break up this sample so we can get a 100 to 200 gram moisture sample out of it. Get the weight on the moisture sample and place it in the oven. Repeat this process three more times or more if necessary to finish your curve. You will know you are wetter than the optimum moisture content when your wet soil plus mold weight begins to drop. Let the samples dry overnight, remove and cool the room temperature, and get your dry moisture weight. This will give you all the data you need to calculate and finish this test. That concludes this test. For additional information, please refer to the student lab manual and get help from your TAs.